and welcome to Dr. Me First. I'm your colleague in medicine and your coach in life, Dr. freaking Aaron Wiseman. This is a summer showcase episode. And if you don't know what it is or haven't listened to any other ones, this is where I am spotlighting a fellow member of the Doctors Podcast Network. One, it's to show you that there are other amazing physician podcasts out there and they are becoming my friends. And two, it's giving me and my team a break over the summer because I think it's so super important that we walk our talk, that if I'm telling you to take rest and to take breaks and to make more space in your life, I gotta freaking do it too. So sit back, relax, listen to this episode, and don't you worry, I am coming back 100%. After this break, there's gonna be so much more Aaron sass, I'm not even gonna know what to do with it all. All right, well, let's get into the episode, but first, let me pay some bills. Here's a quick message from MR Insurance, a small business that helps physicians with their disability insurance needs. Michael Ravis is a CFP professional and insurance agent committed to helping physicians nationwide with their term, life, and disability insurance needs. He provides an objective, transparent, and education-focused process that aims to help doctors make prudent decisions and avoid overcomplicating things. He exclusively offers own occupation disability insurance policies for residents, fellows, and attending physicians. We know he'd be happy to talk to you with whatever needs you have. You can find Michael at drpodcastnetwork.com backslash MR insurance or contact him at 800-817-4522. Finally. A source of raw, real, and honest information on healthcare issues that matter most. Welcome to BS Free MD. From the latest medical information to how to stay sane as a doctor or a patient, no subject is taboo, no BS is allowed. Now, let's welcome your hosts, Doctors May and Tim Heinmarsh. Welcome to another Doc Tales with Cocktails. Cheers. You know, last, last, yeah, cheers, baby. So last time we talked about, you know, silly things that we hear patients say to us that, you know, are intriguing, funny, annoying at times. But, you know, because this is BS Free MD. It's time to share. It's time to share. If you don't call BS on yourself, you are not truly BS free. I hate doing that. I don't like calling BS on myself. Well, if you want to be, at, be BS free MD or and BS free, you must call BS on yourself, which we are doing today. Yes, we are going to discuss stupid stuff that we have done, largely in our careers. Largely you. <laughs> well, of course, it's going to become the stupid stuff Tim has done. Why is he not dead? <laughs> anyway. Uh, why is he still male? You'll figure that out. That is actually... Oh yeah! Honest to God, I think that's really pretty much a miracle. Stay tuned for that one. I almost transitioned without wanting to <laughs> without transition. <laughs> that was a big frosty faux pas. But the big frosty faux pas. <laughs> but before we share and spill all the beans on all the shit we've done, uh, this episode is brought to you by Contract Diagnostics. Um, they're a firm that's 100 percent dedicated to physician contract reviews. They provide a service that all physician families will need at least one time in their careers, most likely a few additional times as well. Uh, we love this company as they have helped over 10,000 physicians understand not only what they are signing, but what risks they're taking for their family. All contracts are reviewed by an in-house attorney and presented in a simplified way back to you using custom documentation compensation data and times outside normal business hours they make it easy for you so all packages are flat priced so you know what you will pay right up front residents and fellows you can even make interest free payments over time so look them up at drpodcastnetwork.com slash contract diagnostics or call them at one 888 Five seven four five five two six. I'll link this at the end of the show. All right. So on with the show. May. <laughs> All righty. 
Well, let's kick this off. I have listed some items to share and I'm going to call this first one when we talk about Tim, which he's not even, he doesn't even know, but he will remember as soon as I maybe give you the title. I'm going to call it Marathon Medical Tent. Does it ring a bell? Yeah, that was completely idiotic. (laughs) So, Tim, why don't you tell everybody when you ran your first marathon, which was in Victoria, how old were you? I have to do the math. Were you in, were, were, was this in residency? Wasn't it just one? No, we it was. Yeah, it was twenty eight. Yeah, well, twenty eight because it was nineteen ninety three. I ran my first marathon. Yeah, so we're still in in residency. Tim runs his first marathon in Victoria, Canada, and we're like super excited. He's trained, and I'm gonna be the medical backup. All cheering him on. I, actually, I did the ten k at the beginning, so I ran the race. Tim's all fired up for the race, and we decide to bring medical supplies to treat him afterwards. Total experiment. Okay, so anyone that's run a marathon, what you realize is that um, as soon as you stop running, and especially if you, as soon as you stop running and lay down or sit down and then get up to move, your legs are essentially two telephone poles that are completely immobile and you well, are getting punched in the quad. In your case, when you take not a, to be mean, but you could only aspire to have telephone pole on legs. Yours are more like fire hydrants. My legs, yes, I know, I know. I'm I'm extra girthy, so <laughs> strong but short. I am built like a fire hydrant. I understand that, and you know, in skydiving, <laughs> I fell like one as well. So we decided that you know because I had ran, it would be really it would be really important to be rehydrated. Even though now, I mean, we may we, we may do an entire podcast on the whole calling oh, BS on hydration. Yeah, we learned so much more after that when we went to that uh, when we went to the Ironman conference. But we thought we were like super cool by like being all prepared and thinking we were going to hydrate you after this race. So so we brought our own, uh, thank God, normal saline. Oh, wait. So we scoffed it somehow. I don't know. If, I think we just went to the hospital and were like, hey, I'm, I'm running I a marathon. When we I did our family, when we were doing the family practice clinic, and we were like, yeah, yeah. let's get some IV tubing. Let's get a couple bags of normal right. saline. Let's, you know, we brought some bandages and all kinds of, I don't know. We had our usual medical supply kit no, but no. i was gonna i i was super excited to rehydrate my husband so on the grounds of the british like the race ends at, at the beginning the, the 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 end of the race is the legislative assembly of british columbia it's, which is spectacularly yeah, if you've never, beautiful if you've never been to victoria this is a big plug to get no. there once covid's like lifted and travel is open to canada again it's like one of the most beautiful cities like take the ferry from seattle go there it's so gorgeous it's, at night well you can't take up. the ferry from seattle you take it from port angeles okay and okay. then you go into the inner harbor the inner harbor is amazing the legislative Assembly is right on the Inner Harbor. It's spectacularly beautiful. It's an old, uh, there's truly old Canadian architecture, yeah. like these, you know, all those hotels they built it's, across the country. And it's just old British style. Everything is gorgeous. But anyway, the races start Done. from there and, and it ends. ends from there. So I'm laying on the lawn and we're like, hey, you know what would be a great idea? Just start an IV in the middle of the lawn and you can give me a bunch of fluid and that would be cool. Of course. And forget the fact that there's, there's um, medical tents around and there's paramedics and nurses at these medical aid stations. We don't need you. We're cool. We're tough. We're family medicine doctors ready for the rural world of medicine and we can take care of each other. Right. And so, so I'm laying there and May starts an IV on me and is holding it up herself. And like, I don't know, one of the workers or whatever, he's like, dude, there's a medical tent. What are you doing? And we're like, we're, we're, we're doctors. And really what we should have said is, hey, we're dipshits. <laughs> hey, and we're I remember dumbasses. I hold up one bag, it goes through. I remember, I think we gave you two liters of saline. So we get to this second one and you're, it wasn't quite done. And you're like, uh, I have to take a piss really, really bad. Well, and that's what happens. Like the, the fact is, is A, I was not dehydrated. I was not overheated. There was nothing. So then I get up. Okay. okay so I have to pee like, like you been, cannot he- even believe this, right? Like this is like. This is this is not like you drank like an entire case of Coors Light. This is like you drank 
10 cases of Coors Light and someone's kicking you in the bladder. And I'm like, I got to pee and I got to pee right now or I'm going to die. And I, I get up and I go to walk <laughs> and I'm playing. walking on stumps because my legs are completely <gasps> wrecked. Oh. And I've been laying there for the last 10 minutes getting an IV. And so it's like, like seriously, I need some <laughs> I thought big you were guy. Gonna- Piss your pants I need on the some, way to the little blue porta potty. I need some guy to like some big guy to carry me like a child. Oh, it was super funny because I just thought your quads were going to snap on the way over there, and you're like waddling and tr- trying to hold it in any way. I think I pulled that thing out, and you ran over, took a leak, and we were done. Well, yeah. But people thought the people are looking. They thought that you had some big medical event, and it's like, what happened to this guy? And he's lying there, and this lady's giving him IV right here. It's like. It was, it's super funny now that I look back on it. I guess you had to be there, but that's just, really dumb. Just stupid, dumb stuff. Your sodium probably tanked at like one. No, but we we use normal saline, so I probably had relatively normal sodium. I think we did. Because otherwise, if you give too much water, and here here's just a little tidbit. Every year for the last who knows how many years at the Ironman. Okay, now if you think running a marathon event, uh, you know Victoria is a big deal. That's nothing. It's usually like 60 degrees, kind of cloudy, not a big deal. The Ironman is run in October when there's a full moon. So it's, what, two miles, two and a half miles of swimming, um, 110 miles of cycling. 120, I think. Yeah. And then and then a marathon. And it's hot. It's Hawaii. And every year they have at least two people out of 1,500 that are fluid overloaded because they drank too much water. Yeah, there's... Very so, few getting IVs out there. So guess what, humans? You're not going to get dehydrated doing exercise if you have access to water. Ever. Never, ever, ever, ever. So please do not give yourself an IV at the end of a race. You look stupid and actually do more harm than good. And there you go. Stupid young doctors. That was pretty funny. All right. Number two on the list is what I call things that explode. Uh, so why don't you? You do you, I can think of a couple things that have blown up in our faces over the years. Things always seem to be blowing up in my my life, but I know that uh, you had a little fun with plastic well, shrapnel. Yeah, I did have plastic shrapnel, but you know what? I'm I'm putting this one back on you. Oh, because May comes out of the room. Oh, and she is just indignant. Okay, she's indignant. Okay. It's like this place stinks. Nobody cleans anything up here. This is just the stinkiest place. It's so stinky. Why is it so stinky? This is terrible. And I I call this little episode something about May, not something about Mary, something about May. You know, you guys need to do your job. You need to clean things okay. up. Okay, let me tell what happened then. Of course, I had somebody come in with a giant sebaceous cyst, was a, uh, the you know blocked gland, plugged up, poor on their back. It was perfect for the for the um the taking it wasn't infected my nurse is helping me out it was on the patient's back i totally remember this and i'm excising this you want to take these things out entirely in their little capsule like a little grape you just dissect around it you want to shell it out you want to deliver the little baby in one piece sometimes if you're unlucky they explode well needless to say i think when i was <laughs> I can't remember exactly. This was so long ago. Cutting into the thing, uh, we burst the capsule. And this thing shot under so much great pressure. I literally ducked. I remember ducking down out of the way as I see this white, mucousy, pussy missile going past my head. And out of the way, it literally hit the back wall. My nurse was back there. And she ducks because I turned around. And then we were laughing so hard, like under our breath, because I'm looking at her. She's looking at me. We're laughing. And the patient, all the patients laying there going, what happened? I kind of smell something really bad because these things reek. I mean, if you like rotten feta or blue cheese, I mean, just think of the grossest thing. I mean, these things stink. Anyway, this thing reeks up the room and I'm like, yeah, sometimes um, the capsule opens and it's sebum, it's like solidified. Think of, I like to use the analogy, coconut oil, you know, it's runny it when it's warm and at um, cooler temperatures are so- solid and hard and these things really smell bad and it opened up anyway. I took the rest of the capsule out of this thing, sewed up the lesion 
and we cleaned up and we were out of there and we had to deodorize and shut down that room it stunk so bad it was unusually bad well the day goes on and i'm seeing patients and i said man that room is reeking every time i walk around it's like it's part of me i can smell it and my nurse and all the other uh MAs and nurses around there like, we don't smell anything. And I'm like, no, I have a nose like a bloodhound. I can smell that room. You guys spray some more stuff. So they spray the hall. They spray the treatment room. And I'm like, it stinks. I keep seeing patients. I can't take it. So we don't have any mirrors around close. I don't think there was one in the bathroom. I duck down and look at the towel dispenser because it's like aluminum. It's shiny. It's right over the sink. And I'm scrubbing my hands like some OCD guy or Steve Martin in what movie was that? And anyway, Parenthood. There you go, Parenthood. I'm just like scrubbing, 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 scrubbing. It's when the kid lost his retainer and he's pulling it out of the garbage, yeah, and then yeah. he's washing his hands, and he goes, that was "Where me. does he get this um, this compulsive behavior?" Anyway, I'm scrubbing, it. and I'm like, and I'm like, I could smell that. I was just like driving me nuts. This is like two hours later, and I bend down and I kind of look in the paper towel dispenser, and I kind of look at my hair. And I'm like, well, what's that white thing right in the temple, right above my ear? I feel up and feel this clot of gelatinous wet goo, and I pull it out and almost gagged. It was something about Mary, if you've seen the movie, only on May. It was a chunk piece, gradu, as Tim would call it, from this sebaceous cyst stuck in my hair like a thick clot of uh, hair gel and it was with me as a memoir of my uh, excision it reached so bad I was almost throwing up in the sink so I obviously literally just started to wash my hair really quickly and everybody's laughing because no one could smell it it was me and the the joke was on me so yeah I had a little something about May episode at work that was actually the first one, and I have another one, another time that happened, which I'll maybe share another, but I had another cyst explode on me while on inject. I mean, those things reek horribly, but it was pretty funny because if you the, have multiple, I'm say, if you have multiple cyst explosions, maybe it says had, more about no, you than the cyst. I've had two, and after two, I wear full beekeeper protection now. I wear the yellow i wear the protective gown the protective shield over my face the whole shebang because these things are nasty anyway why don't you share your little exploding shrapnel episode tim i was doing a pap smear on a rather large patient and this was in the days when you know after we had had we used to have the the metal the stainless steel speculums I miss those which were good yes but of course the patients hated them because they they were like you put them in liquid nitrogen yeah but they're like why is that so cold I mean you didn't uh, warm yours up with a hair dryer in the room like I did for my ladies <laughs> I'm kidding then it's hot metal no I well right because then you put it under boiling hot water and then it, you know whatever so it was one of the plastic speculums and you know I'm doing my job. And I go to open it up, and it explodes. But it doesn't just break. Thank goodness it didn't injure the patient. But it ejected, and it threw plastic gross. speculum so gross. into my face. Like, literally, it was like a vaginal grenade. Wow. And didn't your nurse, like, because she's a neat freak, and I remember her just standing at the head of the bed there with the patient, you know, that she would do, just like have this mortified look on your face like, OMG, what just happened? Like, should I say anything? Do I need to comfort him? Do I need to pick this off of his... You know, but the, you know, the thing that's amazing to me is is actually how you react in those situations. Because, you know, normally if I was driving and something happened and somebody cut me off like that, I would be saying all sorts of incredibly nasty things. And I didn't. I just said, well, you know, we've had a problem. We'll get a Houston, new one. Houston, we've had a little incident. Right. Like, it, it's just amazing. Like, it tells you how much discipline you actually yeah. have if you give a crap <laughs> being disciplined. <laughs> you know, if that would have been traffic, it would have been like a stream of, like, incredibly terrible words. No, I know that. There's times when, yeah, things go wrong. I could think of some other things that have happened to me and you you literally just you take your you take a deep breath and and you don't go, "Oh no," cuz those are the two words that patients never want to hear is, "Oh no." It's just like deep breath 
okay, um, yeah, no, everything's good down here. Everything's fine. Are you sensing a problem? Now nah, we're all good. So, yeah, uh, I have not had the pleasure of having, thankfully, plastic uh, speculum explode in my face. And I've done probably 20 times as many pelvics as you. So let's hope for the best. All right, moving along. Number three, I call or we call hillbilly medicine. We can say this with pride because we do live in rural or uh, rural uh, America and it is banjos playing out here. Um, and we're proud of our banjo playing hillbilly medicine. And this is something we've done. <laughs> Tim's done. Um, I also wanted to call this weekend vasectomy, but he calls it hillbilly. Yeah, so one of my best friends uh, needed a vas vasectomy. Actually, it was quite a complicated procedure because he had a reversal and needed re re reversed. So I'm like, and I said, look, this is what we'll do. You know, I'll give you a deal. And I checked with my group. I'll give you a special deal. I'll give you a special deal. And I, and I said. Just for you. I said, look, I, I'm going to use the procedure. Two for the price of one. <laughs> I'm going I'm I'm, I'm gonna to use the procedure. Two sides for the price of one. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> Someone's had a little too much crater and crayon. You mix this. We'll get to that later. Anyway, go ahead. So at any rate, um, I just told him, I said, look, this sometime this weekend, you know, the office is going to be empty. It's no big deal. We can just do some sort of barter tradesy trade and I'll get you taken care of. So I'm literally leaving the drop zone. I said, hey, I got weathered. I can't jump. So meet me in the office in an hour and a half and we'll get you taken care of. And I'd given him like a couple um, out of van or something, you know, for sedation beforehand. So sedation, you mean just to calm him down? Right. Yeah. Because a relaxed scrotum is oh. a happy scrotum mm. when you're doing a vasectomy. Mm -hmm. You do not want the tense, retracting, hiding. freaked out, hiding right. scrotum. So okay. he shows up. His wife's there as kind of the assistant. I do the procedure. It's really not that big of a deal. And I traded him for half a gallon of whiskey. You got paid in whiskey. Yes. And, you know, when the economy goes to complete total crap and we have to do that again, I'm used to getting paid in whiskey. So, hey, so, you, want a, you want a weekend vasectomy? No problem. So did you clean up your mess afterwards? That's of course I did. That's all the nurses and the, they care about. Right. Unlike one of my other partners who he had a, like us, he had an elder elderly retriever. Our dog is 12 years old. And he's like, you know, the dog seems to have kind of a mass on her chest. I'm going to take her to the office on the weekend and see what this is. So he takes his, you know, he takes his dog into the office and he has, you know, he has his, his sons come with him and he numbs the dog up and, you know, they pet her and they get her on the table and she's kind of sedated and he starts like dissecting into this lesion and he's like, my goodness, this is really firm. Mm -hmm. I think I think the dog has breast cancer. Gosh! So he literally did a Labrador Retriever mastectomy in our wow. rural office, and and that was fine. Like you know, whatever, right? You know, it's our business. Who cares? It's you know, it's the dog was not harmed. So now there he's was... now he's venturing into the world of veterinary medicine. Right. Well, right, but like no, veterinary oncology. So he does that, but what makes the story amazing is that was like, you know, on a Saturday afternoon. The next Monday, oh, the I staff know. shows up and he didn't clean anything no, up. I know. He never cleaned anything up. I worked with him for years and he Nah, he just left it there. I mean, yeah, so now, he put his sharps away and all that stuff, but yeah, he just so, left a giant mess. So now you have a giant bloody mess with a bunch of black lab hair. <laughs> and I mean, it it looked it looked like some sort of weird ancient That's crazy. ancient sacrificial like pyre. And people are coming in it's like, "What, what? happened? No you know, kidding. Who got sick? Did somebody get really sick?" And you have to do this like, uh, "Uh, no, I just did a mastectomy on wow. my Labrador retriever." <laughs> Okay, now, since we're telling all about vet medicine at home, dear, what about the time that, okay, Lex, remember Lex? Uh, we had a crazy um, Bengal cat, and he would get in fights all the time. I remember us taking him out into the garage and did not 
you do an I and D on no, some. No, no, I never I and D. I thought you did. Nope, I never did. I never did. We had that one. We had the the first Siamese cat we had had a had a chest abscess, and I actually took her to the vet. And I and the reason was no. A, Yes. No. Nope, we nope. did it once. We cut in. Yes, I was there, and I remember we took like it was like a little mini scalpel. We were out there, and we did. Um, but then we did take him in after that. Yes, because I remember that. That was the only now, time I've cut into the cat. Now, what about the dog? We've done our own vet med on our beautiful little doggy. She's had a beautiful. I call it unicorn horn. Well, actually, our daughter calls yeah, it that. She's, we have she's done been our growing own sebaceous. Medicine. Sebaceous mm-hmm. cysts. Apparently, we should be. Sebaceologist, but I know, but the vet wants how much for that? No, they wanted six hundred bucks in sedation and like, or whatever. And I'm like, I'm like hey, come I'm, on! I'm I a- am the dog whisperer. I sit there and we sit on the floor and I pet her and calm her and you know whisper sweet nothings in her ear. And then you get the anesthesia, the lidocaine in there, and we excise that little lipoma. We've taken actually, it's not a lipoma; it's a sebaceous. Cyst yeah, we've taken two sebaceous cysts off our dog because staple her head and because you know what. Her. You can't do hillbilly rule of medicine unless you've done surgery on a Labrador retriever. <laughs> hey, you're waking up the producer here. <laughs> so, yes, um, I remember though after the vas on our our friend, we all four of us, his wife and I and you two, went out for a brunch or whatever at Cherry's afterwards. And he was it was so funny because he was just coming off his Xanax and he was all giggly and. He's like, I don't feel so bad. It feels pretty good. And we were just, it was pretty funny. Who goes to Sherry's for brunch after having a vase in a, for a handle we, of- We didn't go to Sherry's right after. We went to the liquor store no, first. Yeah, I Because noticed. I demand full payment <laughs> for services rendered. <laughs> On that note, uh, let's take a little cocktail um, commercial break. Why don't you tell everybody what cocktails we're um, tasting today? Okay, so we are. This is pretty uh, good. Yeah, we are um, drinking Crater Lake vodka. Crater Lake vodka is from the Bend Distri- Distillery in Bend, Oregon, and really, I think probably the best. And I think I don't know for sure, but probably one of the oldest or the oldest micro distillery in Oregon. Mm. Really good stuff. They um, they make a really good uh, Crater Lake. You know, their vodka is Crater Lake vodka. Crater Lake. The only national park in Oregon, a must see. It only took us about twenty seven years of living here before we went there. You know, stupid move on our part. Uh, they have another one that they make called Juniper Gin, which is absolutely spectacular. If you, you know, Central Oregon where Bend is is just filled with juniper trees. Huh. So I'm. Drink- so did you know that Crater Lake Vodka, by the way, is um, filtered? I'm just gonna see what I'm reading off their website, but it's filtered. 10 times through charcoal and crushed lava rock, which is totally fitting being... The entire state. I I think the only state in the country with more lava than Oregon is Hawaii. I mean, you dig six inches below the dirt in our yard and it's just basalt lava. Like the whole place is lava. Lava, lava everywhere. What I like about it is that it's gluten-free because I can't do gluten. And um, yes... They have the gin, um, because there's beautiful crisp pine. Are they the ones that make the mazama juniper? Uh, they do. What's their? Pe- they make a pepper. They do one, a right? whiskey. Yes, they have a rye whiskey. Um, but eh, I'll have to get to the right uh, thing on the page. I'm not sure about that. But they also make an espresso vodka that I really like. It's good to sip hazelnut espresso vodka. Mm-hmm. It's pretty tasty. Tim's mixed me a. Just a typical vodka, cranberry, but it's got cherry in it, so it kind of is leaning to uh, medicine-y taste. But I, I only <laughs> drink for medicinal purposes. So we're calling this a crater and cran. Yes, crater lake vodka. You can use that crater and oh, cran. Oh, here we go. They do have a special batch called Hatch Green Chili. I don't like green chilies, but if you do, um, yeah, you can make a really good... Don't you, you guys make a... Uh, if if you've ever gone to Mount Bachelor and had a chili based um bloody mary it 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 is a game it they taste so good again half a salad is in it yeah then that would be a perfect one to put in there um then they have their vodkas they have northwest berry the hatch green chili which i mentioned oh pepper yes they have a pepper um berry vodka 
I'm not a fan of anything spicy. And then there's sweet ginger. I've tasted that one. You can get little around here, little minis of their different vodkas. The hazelnut espresso, which we mentioned. The ginger I actually really like. Oh, you like that one? Yeah, I like it's that It's good one. at Christmas. Um, Pro oh, here we go. Prohibition gin, reserve gin, and then they have the whiskey, Crater Lake rye, um, rye whiskey, Black Butte whiskey. They have a lot of different spirits. Malt whiskey. Good grief! If you like whiskey, they have all kinds. So um, they're not sponsoring us, but we would love it if they were because we drink their vodka frequently. So she is drinking a Crater and Cran, and I have decided to go all out, and I am drinking a. Winter Red Bull and vodka. Oh yeah, so that's win- why it's blue. That's why it's blue. It's it's a it's a it, actually it's the color of Crater Lake. The thing that's amazing <gasps> about Funny. like the Winter Red Bull flavor. If they get rid of this, I will be so sad. It is the best. It's some sort of like you look at it, and you're like, I don't ever want to put that in my mouth. It's like you know, mountain berry, some weirdness. It is the best well, Red looks, Bull. It looks like it's chemical filled because it's blue, like. What? Oh no! There's no chemicals in Red Bull. Are you kidding me? And so it is. It is. It is a perfect flavor. It mixes great, and you know Red Bull and vodka because I, you know, really I I just need to get jacked up. It's the last thing you need. You need I, I don't know sleepy time melatonin in there. Anyway, uh, no. So uh, give Crater like vodka a try. Uh, we really like it. They have great spirits. And if you're listening, Crater Lake Vodka, uh, we'd love it if you'd sponsor it. We loved you. Moving along, let's get to number, I don't know, four on the list of crazy stuff we've done. I'm calling this Let's Play Nurse. Tim, have you ever played nurse? Let's not. Well, let's just say that a long time ago in a world far away, after our first child was born... Tim's nurse quit suddenly, gave her two weeks notice and was gone. And I was on a maternity leave and, well, I thought I would just run and be the hero and fill the void and go in there and help, which turned into, what, nine months of help at minimum wage, nurse wage. So I'm not kidding. No, it was not minimum wage. It was, it was entry, entry level, level nurse, nurse, nurse wage, which is not minimum to, what, wage. 12 bucks an hour back in 1997. Yes. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So I went in there and said, I'll help out. Fight for 15! We had a friend. Uh, we have a friend. and She was she had a baby at home. She was gracious enough to say, yeah, I'll watch your daughter. I'm like, good, I can get back to work. I didn't, wasn't ready to go back as being a doc. And I think it was three months, four months postpartum. I'm like there to help till they get a new nurse. Well, you know what happened. They didn't care about looking for anybody because I was filling the the void nicely. So... It, there were so many funny things that happened when I was doing that. First of all, it was kind of fun at the beginning because it was really pretty easy back in the day. You know, I could just, people would call in. I could give them advice without having to consult Dr. Tim because I'm a doc, so I'd know what to say. I could refill meds, no problem. It was fun learning to really give the vaccines for, we did, you did a lot of pediatric vaccines. And so now I'm giving them instead of just ordering them, which is really kind of a good experience to have. Um, that was a pain, though. I hated filling out all that. There's so much paperwork. But anyway, lots of paperwork. And then a lot of things. It worked out nicely for you because I didn't have to ask your permission for a lot of medication refills. Then things got kind of fun because occasionally you'd have to run across the street to the hospital, which was literally across the street, uh, to do OB someone would be delivering and so there'd be some people that would come in with some simple things right like strep throat or sore throat or earaches I'm like eh, I'll see those people I don't know how we billed for it back then I really can't remember how that worked out for billing but I'm like just keep them on the schedule I'll take care of them somehow I, I mean we still were able to bill for it I'd just say hey you're getting to see me today Dr. Tim went to do a delivery it was all cool well a couple of times it was pretty funny because you could have some patients that would come in and they were expecting to see your ex-nurse let's call her um Rhonda so they'd be like oh you're here hi I've never I don't know who you are where's Rhonda and I'd say oh Rhonda she left she took another job but I'm filling in who are you and I'd say well I'm Tim's wife oh oh you're Tim's wife 
is is that legal? Can you do this? Um, and I'd be like, yeah, it's okay. And I'd be taking their blood pressure. Like, well, do you, do you know how to take a blood pressure? I, I, you don't do it the same as Rhonda. And I just kind of laugh. I'm like, it's all good. And I didn't want to play the whole, well, I'm a doctor card. But sometimes I'd said nothing. And I just thought it would be kind of funny to see what happened. And well, then, um, you know, if they got really worried, I'd say, it's okay. I'm actually a physician too. And I'm just helping out. Oh, that's so sweet, darling. You know, then they'd be okay with it. Well, I remember a couple of times, you know, that would happen. And then the whole thing of, oh, you're Dr. Heinmarsh's wife. I, I don't want to see you. I don't think this is right. You know, they wanted a real nurse. So that was kind of funny. Help me, Rhonda! Anyway, so that was kind of funny and fun. And then uh, one thing that tipped me over the edge. So, okay, this only went on for like eight or nine months. And the company just totally forgot about us. And I'm like, seriously, I'm getting like 12 or 15 bucks an hour for this. Long days. I was exhausted. Fight for 15. And it got to the point where when you put two medical professionals together, working directly together, used to thinking independently. Who are used to being equals. And now I am technically his subservient nurse who doesn't want to take orders or I think times when he should step up to the plate, as I would say, and take over the doctor role instead of me doing some of the stuff. And he'd yell at me, no, just tell them whatever. And I would say, no, it's your job to take over, especially when people would call in um, wanting narcotics. They're um, really being abusive on the phone. I'd say, enough. You need to just take over. It's your turn to just get on the phone and tell them enough is enough. Well, we would start bantering in the hallway and we get into this. I remember a couple of times we got into a huge fight and it was almost like a scene from, I don't know, nine to five or working girls or something. And I felt like I had the whole team of nurses behind me because they're like screaming, we're not going to take it. You know, I'm a terrible. And I'm singer. just like, you know, I'm like, hey, do your freaking job. <laughs> I'm like, it's your job as the doctor to get on the fence. Anyway, we had some funny fights, and then the nurses would just, like, take my side, like, yeah, you tell them. And it was kind of a, I don't know, it was pretty funny. So anyway, I was so humbled by the, what, um, our, at the time it was RNs we had, but RNs, MAs, what they do, because that is hard work. I saw a whole other side to medicine. I wouldn't, I would not do that again. We work great together in the office, but on equal Only terms. when we're equals. Which so is, which I is, think I think next is, time it's time for Tim to be minors. I think, I think that it's, I think it's, fa it, it brings out a fastening part of our marriage. Like really, I think we've been successfully married, um, mostly happily, almost, you know, 95% of the time. Mostly other than those nine months of hell. Right, 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 right. No, I'm kidding. You know, if you just do what I say, yeah. you would have a great life. That was really cool. Really cool. So, you know, the, but the interesting part is when we're equals, like we've worked together for our entire career off and on, like for 30 years. Our first job was every single shift we worked together, Um, you know, for almost two months. Every single shift, like every, and, and, you know, that was urgent care, and then we went into family practice, did hospital, all the rest of it. <laughs> Two then, brains are better than one, right? Right. And as long as we were equals, it was never an issue. When it when it became, a, like, because, let's be honest, it, it, your, your medical it, assistant or your nurse is not your equal, and they no, shouldn't be. And that, you know, there's a lot of couples, though, where the wife or husband, I will say now in the modern world, is um, in a... I don't want to say use the word subservient. That just doesn't sound right. But at a different role, and they can su the supportive role, and the other one is different. You know, there's tales. Yeah, but, but, but in the but, old days, when the physician is the husband and the wife was the RN, or pick something else, a wife is the receptionist or the bookkeeper in a business, and the husband is the mechanics on the car. It works, but man, it did not work cool for us. No, when no, but but the but the point is this: is just because you have different roles. Even if your role is primarily at home, ra you know, raising children, taking care of the home front, being the CEO of your family business, it doesn't make you less equal. That's the point. The no. point is, is that, you know, different but equal 
is critical. Like we think somehow, I, you know, we get confused that somehow equal needs to be same. Equal is not the same. No, but I'll just say that that was still, that role for me was not good. It was still stupidness that I'd done. I mean, right, would, you, right, would you like right. to be my assistant, my MA in the office? Silence, total silence. Yeah, exactly. No, it's not going to happen ever. No, 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 but 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 it's a bigger, <laughs> it's a bigger point. The the bigger point is is that in a marriage you have to be equal. Like if anything, in our if if anything we've done taught us something. Right. Doesn't is mean that when the we're equal? No, I get when it. we are pre- when we perceive each other as equals. Okay, but with different rules, everything works like way simpler. Mm-hmm. If you're the guy that's earning money and you're gone all the time and you earn a, let's say you make a million dollars a year and your wife earns on paper zero, but all of your bookkeeping for your, like for your personal finances are done, your children are raised, your you know, house. right, but that's not what we're talking about. The whole thing is that I was thrown into a completely right, different right. role that, and now I'm taking orders from you. And I would think that the right. job of the I'm physician, sa- but, but that's what I'm saying. It, it was what just I'm saying like is, a mess. What I'm saying is, is that like what that showed me is that different but equal is critical. Right. If you want a relationship with somebody, where like a marriage, <laughs> where really you are the same, right? Like, well, like we you. Can- we could we can analyze this up to the cows come home, and that would be a great episode for another time about equality in marriage and how roles are different. Anyway, let's just say I'm not being your nurse again. Anyway. Perfect. Moving on to number five. Let's briefly touch on this one, which I call Speed Racer. Do you remember Speed Racer? It was, it was the th- fourth greatest day of my life. The fourth greatest day. The first, marrying you. The Aww. second, the birth of our first child. Aww. The third, the birth of our second child. Aww. The fourth, driving to the hospital at 150 miles an hour. Go speed racer, and why don't you tell them how that happened? So we had a patient. So stupid. Okay, so Don't we... do this. This is so stupid. I, I mean, the second they called and he got the look on his face, I went, this is going to be so stupid. Okay. So we live in a rural area and we live about uh, eh, 25-ish minutes away from the hospital. And I was on backup call. So backup call in a rural hospital means that you cover everything that no one else can cover. So if somebody comes into the ER and is really sick and needs to be admitted to the hospital, they call you, you go in, you admit them. If they need to go to the ICU, you take care of that. And if they need an extra pair of hands because somebody took a high-velocity gunshot wound to the groin. Imagine that happening in a rural area. And they have a desperate need of more than two hands to try to make sure their leg doesn't fall off and, you know, B, you save their life. They call you from the OR. And, the and I you know, I knew the, the scrub nurse, the, you know, very well, or the circulator as it was. She calls me up and she goes, Dr. Hindmarsh, Dr. X needs you. You need to. And then, and then honestly, I remember this, this these is exact like, words. this is like, the, I, this is like, this is like, for me, this is like hearing you have just one Powerball. They said, you need to come as fast as you can. Yeah. So. Anybody listening or anybody in the future or whatever, never tell, never say those words to Tim. Mr. Mr. Corvette Rescue, like, dug out his, what? I can't as remember what you had at the time. As you can. So he, I had a, he said that to me and he gets, off the, he gets off the phone. Guess what they said to me? His eyes bulge out of his head with the biggest Cheshire grin on his face. They told me to come as fast as I can. And I'm like, oh, shit. Because Tim likes I jumped into, this was what, like 1996? He's he's, he's Jeff Gordon wannabe persona, pops out of his body, and he flies down the stairs with the Superman cape on into the car, and he goes to the Batmobile. Into the 1995 Polo Green Corvette that I had only owned for about six months. I get in that thing, and I literally, I, I I am driving through the little town we live in, 
I get onto a side street to get onto the highway that connects the two towns where I'm going to the hospital. I am four wheel drifting. I get in. I get on to. So this is a four lane highway with a refuge lane in the middle. Okay. And I'm going 150 miles an hour. I am passing people in the refuge lane. And it is just absolutely. It is awesome. Like I move the seat all the way as, to the front as I can. I got my Mark Martin NASCAR grip on there. I get into town, and there is a blockade of cops. Yeah. And they they cool. pop out and they they take their mag lights and flip them around so the mag light becomes a club. <laughs> you don't need a billy club anymore. You just need a flashlight. Oh, and he's God. like, "Who are you and, and why? why?" I remember that. Who are you and why? And so I just said, look, I'm a doctor. They called me to come as fast as I could. I'm doing what I can. I need to get to the operating room. You know, you know, you guys need to booger off. So I. I can't believe that they just small. Oh, town, the small town living man. No, like, I should have. Those were the days. I have some stories. There, too, there, but, there was zero excuse for what I was doing. No, so anyways, that was stupid. So I get to the hospital. Stupid. I, I run through. I run to the OR. I put scrubs on. I look back. And the ambulance that dropped this guy off is just leaving. And they stopped and talked to the police. And the police just drove away. And I got no ticket. But it gets better. It gets better because later that week, I was in the nursing home seeing a patient who had, you know, been in the nursing home for, a, you know, a chronic problem for years and years. And I was visiting with this patient's husband. And she said, she was, he was at a, Oh, his yes. sister, he I was at his sister's, this. and he's like, the scanner, right? Yeah, the sister has a scanner. It's like, I'm on the <laughs> scanner, and your doctor's gonna get a ticket because he was going like 150 miles an hour, and the cops will put up a blockade. And know what his response was? He'll never get a ticket, he's a doctor. <laughs> My gosh, <laughs> and mission the, accomplished. And that's the end of the story. Thank you, Paul Harvey. Rest in peace. All right, number six, final one. Uh, funny how this involves you again, my darling. It's it's aptly called the Dixical. Okay, so this, <laughs> I've done a lot of stupid stuff, and there's another entire hour episode in this, oh. but but this this absolutely 100% cream of the crop, stupidest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Dixical. Dixical. So we are... We are vacationing in Canada. Vacationing. Mm -hmm. And vacationing in Canada at in, Christmas. In, at Christmas is really below. not vacationing. It's basically being tortured. So we are in Flin Flon, Manitoba, way up north, uh, 56th parallel. North of the 54th parallel. Yeah, so almost the Arctic Circle. Not quite par Not quite polar bear territory or tundra, but close. But close. So My hometown. Thank you very much. So we are visiting. Um, May's grandparents and May's parents are there and May's sister's th there. All in a, what, 800 square 800 foot 800 square foot house. And for some reason, when it's 40 below outside, the way to fix that 40 below problem is to make it 85 degrees in your house. <laughs> so, so it, like, this is so cold that we're playing cards and it is literally 80 degrees in the house. And, and the we would steam take... steam was coming no, down No, it was windows. insane. Like, we would take a six-pack of beer... And put the six pack of beer in a covered porch. And in a covered porch, it would turn to ice. You you would you would That's what open everybody does in the Great White North. You would open cold. the beer that was just sitting outside in a covered porch, and like a tube of frozen beer would come out, and then you'd knock that off, and you'd like, I can't believe it. Eh? Like this beer is really cold. I love that. You know, in the, like the good thing about winter. It's like you get really cool beer, eh? Like, holy okay. shit, that's good. And, so, anyways. And, and so, so, most normal people go snowmobiling, cross-country skiing, no. or um, ice fishing for fun in the winter. But what did you decide no, to no, do? No, 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 no. Most normal people never leave the house! Yeah, well, Mr. Marathon here. So, I'm like, I think you were training for that dumb one in Victoria. I don't know. What, what did I, you decide no, no. to I do? I was training for not killing every single person in the house and going to jail for the rest of my life. That's what I was training for. So he Because leaves. I'm like, if I, don't, if I don't get some sort of exercise soon, I will, like, I will be insane. Like, there's people yelling at each other. It's a million degrees in this house. And I'm like, I'll just do what I normally do. 
So I'll go for a run. So I put on a pair of ski pants, and I have. No, I don't think you had ski pants. Oh, had, I did. You had like those skinny little sweats. Well, or whatever. Simple. And I, and and then I'll put on you know a couple layers in a shell. And a hat, and you have to breathe through something because you cannot breathe, especially when you're running, you know, 40 below air. And it's legit 40 below. It's not 40 below with the wind chill. It's like freaking 40 below. It's like it's 40 below, yes, and I don't and give a equal, you know what. It's 40 below becomes equal in Celsius and Fahrenheit for Canadian and American or right. Listeners. So 40 so below equal. Celsius and 40 below Fahrenheit are, the, are same. the exact same degree. And I'll give you a more scientific reason of why that's the same thing. So I go for a run and I'm going, you know, I'm not going for a two mile run. I'm going, you know, like, cause, you know, that's for girls. I'm going for a 10 mile run. So I run. It's a small town and I'm literally running and I, I get out, I get out of the town. I run out of the town and I'm running and I'm running and I'm like out on the highway and it's dark because you know what? It's dark at two in the afternoon there. <laughs> so I'm walking, I'm running, I'm running. And it's all good. I'm like, you know, this isn't that bad. I'm a badass. This is, you know, it's cold. I got to run slow. It's and you're like, a not Canadian that, boy too. And it's not that big of a deal until I turn around. And then I realize that it's not that bad because I have about a five mile an hour tailwind. So a five mile an hour tailwind Ooh. in 40 below is like literally 65 or 70 below when you turn around. So I turn around. The wind is no longer a tailwind. It's now a dick wind. So the dick wind it's is hitting... It's a front tail. It's, yeah, it's the front <laughs> tail, as our daughter used to say. So the front wind is hitting me at like 70... It's like a 70 below zero blast furnace hitting my pants. And I'm running and I'm running and, like, and, and, and you know, I try to think that I'm reasonably tough. Did you like, run all the way back or did you get a ride? Oh, no, that hell time? no. I ran all the way back. But that wasn't the time you got picked up by some of our native no, friends? No, okay. No, that uh, you was, ran all the way that back. That was a That's different 10-mile run. Anyway, you made it back. That's so, right. I so remember running, you walk back, and you, back get, and you get home and the sheet, when well, you get back, the, the sheet of ice that fell out of the back of your jacket. No, it's, 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 it's crazy. Solid. So I'm running and I get like half a mile and I'm like, my... Unit? Unbelievably generous male mm. organ mm -hmm. is so cold, it is in jeopardy of becoming frostbitten and making me Tammy, not Timmy. So <laughs> now I'm running with my hands down my pants. Because if I don't run with my hands on my fence, like literally, it is a dick. Like, get the stick. Because you are going to have a dixical. Like, it is ridiculous. I remember. I, so I remember you got back. And you pulled that jacket off, and the sheet of ice falls off, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" The gosh. entire jacket on the inside was total frost, like like the inside of a freezer. So we uh, filled the bathtub with warm, hot, whatever water, and he, and he's getting in there, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, your quads, like your legs, are just beet red on fire because they're so cold." But I'm like. Where did everything else go? No, it's all it's all it's all <laughs> frosted. So we I'm can like, tell you, we can tell you, we have the single study, the scientific ev evidence that forty below is not only where Fahrenheit and Celsius are the same temperature; it's also where the male and female phallus become the exact same size. Yeah, uh, that day we were equals. On a post when I was sharing nurse. Yeah, and you know what? After that, we had two beautiful children. So, yeah. but can, I, I'm, I'm that, like, I'm what, that was the stupidest. No, that, stupidest. Like, I'm running back. Wait, at, no, no, that was before kids. Um, that's what I said after that, we had two beautiful. After children. that, after we had two beautiful kids, what did you do again in the name of running, Tim? Uh, three days after a vasectomy, I ran four miles. After about ten steps, I realized it was a bad idea. But you know, hey, you got to finish then your workout. And you became the elephant man. If you want to see testicles swell, go for a four mile run after having a vas. Stupid, stupid, stupid. You always think you're like so not that guy. But I'll tell my patients what to do. But I'm not that guy. Anyway, so he had the smallest genitalia, and then to the giantest testicles I've ever seen like aside from animals in the wild. So you know what? He does some pretty crazy you're, stuff. You're welcome. That didn't last long. And I remember you laid on their couch moaning and groaning. I think we threw ice pack on there and you had your feet up watching NASCAR. Anyway, Tim does some crazy, pretty crazy stuff. Uh, we have a lot of other stupid stories. So just and the beginning of how stupid I am. Do you want to see done. me as a patient? Oh, uh, 
thankfully, he's an awesome doctor, not a very good patient. <laughs> I am a God. terrible patient. Other than when I had a ruptured vasectomy, drove myself to the oh, hospital. Oh, yeah. And then they gave me, they gave me the greatest thing in the history of mankind. Yeah. A PCA pump. I wanted, a PCA uh, pump. We'll a tell, PCA pump is... We'll go. We'll, I we'll want to tell story that next. story another time. That was just a crazy experience. Like I was on the road with the kids, and he was stuck in the hospital, stoned on morphine because he had to let his appendix rupture. And we're stupid patients. We've all we're bad patients. Anyway, this was really fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Hey, um, this podcast was b- brought to you, by the way, thankfully very much from Contract Diagnostics. Um, This is a company that specializes in contract reviews. Specialization is something that we can all appreciate here. So again, when you or your family have contract needs, give them a call. They'll help you understand your contract and make sure it lines up with your interests and protect the assets that you covet most, your time and family. Find them at drpodcastnetwork.com slash contract diagnostics or by phone 888 um five seven four five five two six. I'll link that in the show notes. And if med students are listening, um maybe those are some tips that you will not repeat in your life. Yeah. Well and for med students, get your contract reviewed. Seriously, <laughs> it is a big deal. You don't think it's a big deal? And it might not be a big deal for five years. It might not be a big deal for t- twenty five years. Trust us, there's a point where it may be a gigantic deal. This is like the cheapest insurance you're ever going to buy. So, uh, as usual, we will see you next oh, Thursday. Yes. Next and Thursday, we are gonna, a new month. We're going to uncap some very, very exciting news. Yeah, we've, we've kept this to ourselves. We didn't want to share it ahead of time with anybody, family, friends, anybody. So, if you're listening... Um, you'll want to listen to the following week for some big, exciting news. Uh, it'll blow your mind away. We're, we're busting at the seams to share. So we'll see you next time. It's no secret that medicine is a bit um, uptight. That's why Tim and I created BS Free MD to mix things up a little and have fun in the process. Besides, we are having these exact same discussions all the time. So we thought we might as well invite everyone to the party. If you really like us, you can get plenty more and maybe see one of Tim's cool tattoos on our Instagram or Facebook pages at BS Free MD. See you next time. Well, we try to keep BS Free MD as raw and real as possible. We can't be held responsible for any medical decisions or discussions had as a result of what you've heard on the show. We know. Bummer. But the truth is, we really do care about your questions. So feel free to reach out to us by email at doc at bsfreemd.com. Hey there, the next cohort of the Burnt Out to Badass CME group is starting in June. And let me tell you, this is the fourth time around, and I can honestly say every time is so different and so much fun. I want to encourage you. You've heard me talk about it over and over and over again. I'm going to keep talking about it because it's so powerful. There are modules that talk about everything from facing your fear to networking to imposter syndrome, perfectionism, getting it right versus just getting it done, all the things. Plus, you get to do it in an amazing group setting. So here's your chance. Check out the show notes. This is the time to get in. No more waiting. We are so excited for you to join us.
Before we end today, don't forget to reach out to MR Insurance Consultants, where their goal is to assist physicians in obtaining the most comprehensive coverage available to fit your unique situation. Reach out to them for both excellent and quality insurance service at drpodcastnetwork.com backslash MR Insurance. I just want to give a big thank you to all our participants in the summer showcase. You guys are awesome. Thank you for coming on Dr. Me First, for helping me have time and space in my schedule. And I hope you, the listeners, enjoy hearing from some different voices. So go outside, enjoy your summer, and remember your life, your calling, your pulse matters. <laughs>